there is a little bit I am going to add to this video here. Kuleva negotiated with the chief of police of the Ukrainian Sumy region. No. There was not one chief of the police. There was not one director of headquarters at the Sumy headquarters police department. All of them. There was a father from uh, Kuleba who was involved political. The Kuleba family was involved in this case for quite some time. And according to the brainwash, was the family that Like they portray one like as the only family in a region that sided with me, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to say that everybody is bad so that a good can be portrayed. And I'm not going to say that good exists during MK Ultra, or I should say pertaining to my case, which is political. Not every MK Ultra case is the same. So that evil could exist. Yeah, I'm not going to say that bad was there for good and good was there for evil. But in case of these people, definitely. Sumi was uh, the worst region of Ukraine since Ukrainian independence. I don't know when they got the independence, 1991. In 91, right? 91, August 91. And all the way to year 1999, Sumi was uh, a lynching place, place for the lynching. This was a lynching location. This is where I would have, there was other worse locations, which is hard to believe, which are closer to the Belarus. Here you can see Gomel. You have a Babruisk and it's going to take you straight to the Minsk. The one who would uh, frequently come to pick me up at Sumi or in this region here. All this region here that you see uh, was none other Cherniv, this was none other than Lukashenko. Uh, Ukrainians were like, like this like this with the Russians and Belarusians, like that, like this, one, like one. Um, it really didn't make any sense to... <coughs> they, uh, they just, uh, they dwelled in their own world, far from reality, till reality became too evident to ignore further finally happened in 2014, but Sumi region was a beast. How many days, nights I have gone without absolutely any sleep during MK Ultra since Ukrainian independence in 91 and somewhere in 2000 is impossible to explain. This was just a, a fucking nightmare. It was a fucking nightmare. The only worst place was Belarus and Russia. Those were even worse than Ukraine. This is like the worst. Sumi region. This is like the worst of Ukraine. I'm going to put it this way. Uh, it wasn't only Lukashenko who traveled to to Ukraine to pick me up. This has uh, 
people like Lavrov, Medvedev, Putin, KGB, Russian KGB, Milan Kuchan, absolutely all the Novo Mesto police directors. I'm sure you heard about brotherly city. Each city has a brotherly city. Let me demonstrate you something. Uh, let's say Novo Mesto, what I'm saying, brotherly city. Twin towns and sister cities in Slovenia, whatever. Is Novo Mesto part of Russia? If I wasn't here, it would be. But they have a problem doing this kind of stuff. They would love to be part of Russia, at least the image they would love to portray, they're part of the Russia. But it doesn't work because I always spoil that the joy. They always try to make image like Slovenia is part of Russia. And that's basically till I pop up on the picture and then the whole picture is just turned completely sour. called what is it town twinning oh yeah there you go and so you would take any of these cities here let's see here for the novo mesto novo mesto there you go uh, one city is bihać in bosnia there is a brescia italy uh, there is a herzegnovi from montenegro langenhagen germany turun poland Ternava, Slovakia, and we also have Jixing, something like that, in China, and Villa Franca, Spain, and so the police department from the Novo Mesto City, the police department from the Novo Mesto City was directly tied to the Sumi police department directly directly and what is notable about the sumi is that russians ruskis had a dacha here in a sumi region uh, this was not one dacha but the top kgbs they had a dachas here in sumi that's how cozy they got with the Sumi police, which uh, terrorized uh, Ukrainian uh, border crossing patrol. The border crossing, this border crossing stuff here was controlled by the Sumi police. They put the nose into it, talking about director of police and would uh, you know just do the stuff that they shouldn't and basically that's like engaging in some sort of contraband they smuggled the ruskies they were making sure that the russians would be coming through the sumi inside to their hosts here in this region in the sumi region and also toward cherniv let me see how big is this Sumi region. They felt uh, they felt as good as at uh, home. Do you understand me? Putin felt Lavrov felt here like at home, like in Moscow, just like this. And the Sumi police. Ukrainian police was scared like a shit. They just 
were more than pleased. They told me there is nothing we can do. We can't stop them. So it was why we assist them. So they assisted them. So, uh, the frequent guest of Sumi was Yanis Ogulin. This was the man who frequently. This is the man who frequently would visit also with other directors. Sumi location with a psychiatrist cops with the novel master police. Frequent visitor of the Sumi. This here. And they would meet. They would do some Illuminati meetings also in this area here. Whatever. But what is what makes uh, Sumi different is they had Russians that they would provide for them with farms and stuff like this. They would provide for them dachas. They would just you did not know where you had people from Moscow entering Ukraine through the Sumi region, through the Sumi uh, border uh, border pass. Uh, they went in and out as pleased. Everything was in the hand of the... Not even that, probably. But I was going to say everything was in the hands of the Sumi Police Department headquarters. This place stink big time. The only place that stink even more when it comes to... When it comes to Ukraine was this year, Chernihiv. This Chernihiv. But... The evil that they engaged in, they covered up for one another and the crime was spread throughout the country, doesn't matter, also to other regions. Um, under MK it was a no-no for me to complain against certain region or something like that of Ukraine, because they would assign the same things to other mayors from other parts of Ukraine to do the same shit, to do the same pedo stuff like they were doing in this region here. This was a beast here, I don't know what to say, but Russians uh, had dachas here. They came here from Moscow, top Russians, uh, if they wanted to, whenever the fuck they wanted to. They had a lot of Russian operatives here. There was some Russian farm, I remember. Two farms that they were, they had, the Russians had people that were highly, highly trusted in this region here. Yeah, there's a lot of houses and stuff like that. Uh, Zelensky, why I know it's a Zelensky that is up to no good. Why I know Zelensky is a criminal. Zelensky claimed also that once the Ukraine received the fighter jets, planes, he will resign, he will retire. That's no good. That's the person that do that kind of stuff. They stink. And the second thing is, he was laughing about the Sumi in front of not only Slovenian delegations and people that were there, police and so on, but he was making this kind of statements and all the Western leaders know, also in front of them, claiming them, laughing that I know the region of the Sumi the most. And what he meant by this sadistic laugh was a torture, basically. Remember when I told you the good exists for bad and bad exists for good. Well, yes, in my case, that's the way it was. At least that's how they wanted me to see it. Not in every case, not everywhere, but I had to do with exceptional idiots in this case. I have no reason to support people like this because so far they did not manage to deliver anything. They delivered, Ukrainian people delivered through enormous efforts and sacrifice, willingness, and they demonstrated the world that there is a whole lot that can be done against this type of criminalism, criminal attitude the Russians had 
uh, just taking for granted humiliate people and uh, running over countries and burning and raping and doing this stuff they stood up against this stuff um, I would love nothing more than to believe that Zelensky is part of this stuff but this is not really huh, this is not really required from me I am a boss of my own I make my own judgments and the lies that Zelensky and Kuleba Kuleba was not even coming to the Sumi Kuleba, Kuleba stayed you know and it looked to me like it was more due to fear uh, that he just kept himself in a in a Kiev on a safe safe location because Sumi appeared to be so dangerous well you know the thing is that they did not convince me about this stuff when I consider this stuff the way you know sadistic people when you see the sadism in the people when you see people sadistic that's a very very bad sign laughing to waste life to somebody and this kind of stuff this is very very bad this is very very bad um, based on the results based on what we have seen and based on you might have not even seen maybe you're pleased with it but I'm definitely because of the brainwash because for every loss these people had like so many backup stories on why and this and that and so on yeah these are the stories that had nothing to do really with it, the territorial losses and losses of lives that it makes me believe that these people are not legitimate and are out there I hope it's not too late for the defeat of the Ukraine that's why I have insisted to Ukrainian side and I'm gonna to repeat to you again this elect for the president of Ukraine Stoltenberg and rename your country Ukraine into the NATO so that you can properly welcome your Russian brothers and sisters while they are invading you you need assistance you need a lot of military assistance you need help you need professional military uh, operations um, management teams that you're gonna work with regardless of how experienced you are because you are probably the most experienced soldiers in the world right now uh, but still war in Ukraine needs more coordinated through the superior technology and tactics and it better happen fast um, push against the Russia that's all I want to say for this video you, you, you say but this is not all the fault of the Zelensky and this and that you know um, I don't have anything else to say in respect to this stuff whatever I stressed out these are the facts I did not go and slender Zelensky go after Zelensky uh, to cause him harm I did deprive myself of a lot of critique that otherwise I would stress on him by just uh, following up on development based on his account on you know compare one to what I see is and I have to say that many things the way he saw himself in this war the way he projected this uh, you know how things are gonna turn uh, is just something that is suggesting me that this is in it to uh, basically apologize uh, you know rather than engage Russians just basically apologize 
misery, basically just a loss, you know, and fuck this, I I never was in the game to apologize something, you know, I was always in the game to beat the shit out of it, I, I don't know anything about, uh, I don't know, when I get into something, I don't know anything about truth, I don't know anything about, uh, you know, sporty defeat, you know, this is not sport. I find this very, very hard, this tactic, from what I see, to see myself in Zelensky as winning the war in Ukraine. In my eyes, the Putin is uh, 3,000 kilograms heavy bombs, uh, which Putin is using to bomb the fuck out of Ukrainian soldiers. 1,500 kilos he's dumping bombs, each bomb, up to 3,000 kilos bombs are raining down on Ukrainian soldiers. The one thing I have to say to you, Vladimir Putin was laughing, he was laughing at this stuff when he was talking about the stuff what he will be using during NK Ultra because he, he did, he declared that he will be, he will be using this kind of stuff. And he express, expressed like sadistically like remorse for Ukrainian soldiers and stuff like that. So I don't know how, how Zelensky have taken and accepted and viewed these things as. But from my point of view, when it comes to destroying your infrastructure, your um, gas, electricity, you know, everything that they they dumping these bombs literally on the shopping malls, terrorism, terror. What I fucking know is that for 3,000 kilo bomb, there's always a 6,000 kilo bomb that exists, and that's the one I would want to use as a response, you know. And if they ever made it, make it to 6,000, I would dump them a nuke. And then I would really tell them, you know, that Russia actually never ever existed. By dumping them one nuke and explaining them for every nuke they would return, it's going to be 10 nukes they're going to go on Russia. And I would repeat them, Russia never ever existed. You can call me a radicalist, you can call me whatever the fuck you want to call me. There is a quarter of Ukraine today that is still missing over two and a half years into the war. And it appears to me Ukraine is losing this war. Yet this is also the kind of war that might not be even there might not be even ability for Ukraine to win this war in Ukraine. Maybe this is the type of war that needs to be finished somewhere else so the peace can come to Ukraine. If you understand me what I'm trying to say. You could understand that from the writing on my blog. But the only tactic that works with the people like Putin, with the terrorists, with the people who kill civilians on a mass scale, with the people that enjoy torture, that enjoy terror, that enjoy doing harm to people, the only tactic that exists is the one that I stated. Ukraine does have much less to lose than Russia. Russia is the biggest country in the world, so the tactic which I mentioned you, and it's a scary tactic because it's the kind of tactic that would really end Russia, that most likely would work. I know, it kind of sounds crazy, uh, radical, whatever you want to say it, but it's the kind of tactic that works. Zelensky never made it to this type of tactic. Um, he insisted would never use nuclear weapons on Russia and in my eyes this is uh, virtually impossible to accept. Uh, 
I'm going to leave you here and say to you just, uh, you'll see what I mean from the following weeks in a Sumer region. You'll see. Milan Kuchan, anywhere from Milan Kuchan, Russians, uh, Sumi, and even worse, I understand, was Cherniv. Cherniv was really violent, but Sumi was violent for much longer time. Cherniv was not even discovered. The one who discovered Cherniv is a potential to exploit one best to the torture abilities involving a torture was Alexander Lukashenko. Alexander Lukashenko, <laughs> the people through Cherniv, especially through Cherniv, not only Sumi, but especially Cherniv here, million times, million times, you understand me? All this here, all this here, this here. Very, very, very risky this year. This is going to be a big fucking problem. This is what Putin stated. This is going to be for the last. The last is going to be Sumi. Why Sumi? This is going to be because it's going to be the easiest one. I believe the Putin believe it's going to be the easiest one. According to the Sumi police and stuff that I stated to you, um, they suggested me even that there were people that were killed and stuff like this yeah it probably shouldn't be a tough cookie when it comes to sumi and uh kuleba i should say zelensky just uh, the two just gave putin a good reason to do that yeah i mean putin literally is going to walk out and i'm afraid zelensky is going to make sure about that like a somewhat legitimate individual from this genocide this he caused throughout Ukraine. There were African people, politicians, who literally cheered Putin his retaliation, like a, some form of justice, basically, that he would inflict on Sumi region because of this occupation here that Zelensky and Kuleba committed themselves to. So this year stinks, totally, totally stinks. As much as you guys are excited about this, uh, the so-called attack on the Kursk, <laughs> uh, this is hilarious. Like I said, did not even reach Suja here. I am not. I'm not excited about this stuff. I'll be excited if you give me some photos of poli Novomesto police directors at the Sumi police station in, in the area. That'll make me exciting if you get me some photos from the police officers and stuff. Slovenian police. If you can do that for me. That would make me excited. Other than that, I don't know. Ukrainians, you're going to have to do something about this stuff. Because, you know, I was thinking about all this stuff. Another individual that I have not mentioned and who was involved all the time with the Vladimir Putin and who even suggested we'll get a Russian citizenship. He was interested in Italian and in the Russian citizenship. This was Barack Obama. Barack Obama was the one who was a U.S. president in 2014 when Russians took away eastern part of Ukraine with the Crimea. This was Barack Obama. Barack Obama was all the time on these meetings, meeting Vladimir Putin on these unofficial meetings. And, you know, I don't know what you people think. But the older generation, you know, the older generation 100% is going to agree with me. You're all going to agree with me that Russian attack on Ukraine in 2014 is something unheard of. Unheard of from the perspective that 
in my personal view, uh, once they attacked Ukraine, I was 100% certain we're going to have American tanks inside of the Ukraine within six months. Well, it didn't happen. So I'm going to ask you, whatever the fuck you are located, because I know you are getting used to these new times. I did not notice anybody question this issue. I did, not, I did not notice anybody question this issue. But if I would go to 2000 and... If I would definitely go to 2000 and there would be a news that Russian tanks entered Ukraine, that they attacked Ukraine, I am 100% certain that any person out there that would be, regardless of where, uh, they would believe, just like I did in 2014, that there would be immediately a response from the NATO. They would immediately send uh, American tanks, a NATO planes, tanks, to support Ukraine. You know? So, I can tell you that times change enormously because nobody questioned this issue. I mean, can you imagine that they would just go and enter Poland uh, even before the Poland became part of European Union, I should say NATO? 100% I guarantee you that from my perspective at least, in 2000, still in 2000, in year 2000, there will be still 90% of the people that would say to you, there will be immediately American NATO response to, they will go definitely and they will help uh, them and this and that, you know. In 2014, Nobody, I did not notice a single fucking person anywhere on the internet or anywhere for that matter questioned why was it that America, NATO did not send their military support and military into Ukraine to liberate one. You know, it was it, in 2014, it was just, uh, you know, peace, quiet, uh, you talk about the prosperity, jobs, and so on. And all of a sudden, you have a tanks in the middle of the Ukraine, almost. Russian tanks. Russia did this so brilliantly because they declared like breakaway regions, the so-called breakaway regions, even that they were assisted by the Russian military. While uh, when it comes to the Krim, they didn't have any people that would be suitable, that would be qualified enough to, uh, you know, raise the arms to the degree they could proclaim that like a breakaway region. They did use the parachuters and stuff like that and paratroopers, I should say, to commit invasion, basically. Everything was an invasion in 2014. The Russians tried to demonstrate this like something different, but it's not. So, I am shocked. I'm really, really surprised. Barack Obama was a Democrat that's not a Republican. Uh, Joe Biden is a Democrat, uh, but the difference between Joe Biden and Barack Obama is that Joe Biden is white, and as a white person, Joe Biden probably cannot allow himself to look too damn lousy about defending Ukraine. Well, when you have a president that is non-white in the United States of America, it's the two things that can happen to the ally country. Uh, it can be like this or it can be like that. I am not saying that 
it's necessary that because it was Obama that it 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 must have been you know the fall of Ukraine that Ukraine was compelled to into default that's not what the fuck I'm saying I am just saying that Kamala Harris if she was to become a president um, it would not look good if she would commit the same thing as Barack Obama did there was no fucking response in 2014 now if she would do the same thing like Barack Obama did um, he will make uh, Joe Biden look more responsible more white I should say more you know what I mean not exactly a positive thing in either case not in a case of black and not in a case of white that's the point in 2022 after Ukraine suffered a total defeat in 2014 and already started to face off with a problem in Donetsk region um, in 2022 ladies and gentlemen we have seen assistance from the NATO for the first time um, the assistance from the NATO was quite uh, okay but yeah from the negotiation point of view from the perspective of Zelensky I would even say necessary laggish slow just as I have described in the part number one here in this part here the part number one how they negotiated there was a Ukrainian and there was a Russian side and then there was a NATO allies etc etc in the background and you know they only acted accordingly to agreements between whatever the Russian and Ukrainian side made in the front run and the front of it all it was Ukrainian and Russian side regretfully so I have to say so there you go guys you in the United States of America do you like to ask questions and you like to question everything I find it amazing that none of you ask none of you questioned how come the United States did not send immediately with a NATO support for Ukraine uh, this is this is actually this is important issue because of what is coming next if it's gonna be another president this president is gonna be hell responsible for what's gonna what's gonna happen in Ukraine that president is gonna bear responsibility um, You know why I am mentioning this issue? Not because that you guys do not question only this stuff here in the United States of America. Because you really, really, you did not. You totally failed to question why there was no assistance immediately sent. Why was it that the NATO did not enter Ukraine? What do you think would have happened if something like this would have happened uh, to Finland? Finland was not in a NATO. But what do you think would happen if the Russian military entered Finland in 2014? You don't think that there would be NATO that would be encircling Finland and entering inside of the Finland from every direction possible? Yes, it would. It would. You know, this is the thing. No. This is something else I had on my mind. Trying to help you people in the United States of America or in other countries worldwide look at me
do you know how that stuff is done? We're talking about why you did not ask in 2014. I'm going to explain to you how this stuff is done because they have done that stuff to me. I'm not going to say that everybody is subjected to MK Ultra, but corruption is like a, really like a disease. This is like COVID-19, something like that. Um, the way this stuff was done, in my case, yeah, uh, they had people interact, politicians, and then all kinds of people, YouTubers and all kinds of people that twisted around these politicians. And I did talk to you about, let's say, this guy here. I'm going to explain to you why you did not question this. So I'm going to explain to you where the failure is so that the history is not going to continue to roll in a totally fucked up direction. I'm going to explain to you what you have done so that you will not do this stuff anymore. So we have this guy, Sergey Brin, right? Sergey Brin Mikhailovich, there you go. There you go. Um, he is worth, how much is he worth? $130 billion. Today I am gonna talk uh, unfortunately, for Mr. Brun Mikhailovich, I will talk today about his cash. But he's not going to be laughing about it again. They say it's $130 billion. That's what they claim. Um, it's, it's, it's like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, you work at, uh, but if you were a packer, you didn't have to worry about it because this kind of garbage, this is the way this stuff is redistributed. Sickness. There is a reason why they have this CEOs and royals and politicians and YouTubers and uh, so-called journalists and, you know, it's like you throw bait food in the water you you let it sit on the bottom of you know right on the bottom and then you see the fish start to circulate you know circle back and forth you know the fish the humans always circle where the money is and money is always where the power is and the power is always in the hands of the politicians as a matter of fact also royals, the so-called royals. And so you have all this fish, you know, circling and, you know, trying, everybody's trying to, something like a flea market, basically, in a certain sense. Everybody's trying to cash on it, from Hollywood to, you know, all kinds of people. This is very important because sickness, I mentioned to you, it is like a coronavirus, like some fucking virus. Let's say that you are average American from, I don't know, Hochaland or whatever. Doesn't matter, right? And so you, your your name is Bobby. My my name was Bobby in the U.S. And you, and you go and you, you know, you read this, you open the paper. Oh shit. A quarter of Ukraine missing. The year is 2014. Oh, oh we're gonna send uh, help. We, we're gonna do whatever we're gonna do. And uh, 
you do this somewhere on some subway or whatever you do, and it's like, oh yeah, damn it, they do real, you know, Russians are you know, good ass, you know. Um, and so, yeah, people don't like that stuff anywhere. Nobody likes that kind of stuff. You know, you talk about the ordinary people. Yeah. So, one thing that's coming to the ordinary people is that they all go to work. If they don't go to work, they definitely go to the local employment office to collect shusha, whatever, money, jingi, kesho. And well, the thing is that, you know, the handouts that are given to the people on a monthly basis or whatever basis, whatever, maybe 14 days in UK or whatever, how you have it, whatever. Um, it's done in a such a way that you better don't question certain issues. If you have a problem with Russia, you know, the only thing you're going to do is you're going to have a, your editor that's going to look at you like this in your newspaper, whatever media outlet that you work. And the same shit can happen to you if you work at uh, uh, manufacturing whatever car or I don't know whatever company it is that you work. You know your boss is just gonna is just gonna look at you like this. You know, and very very often what's gonna happen is if you work, let's say, uh, like Mr. Lloyd managed to convince me. American defense boss, he was involved in this type of brainwash. It was like, um, yeah, I'm going to take time to do this, actually. Mr. Austin Lloyd. The only thing that's going to happen when it comes to this kind of issues is um, what they'll do is, this uncles, what they'll do is, they'll just go like this during MK Ultra, that was a frequent thing. They explain to you how much an individual like Sergey Brin is worth. They involve Sergey Brin all the time, and they also involve the list of other Russians, also from Switzerland and from whatever they send them. They made a mutual agreement with these billionaires that traveled like Abramovich to the Britain. And you have this shit, you have like a grass all over the fucking place any fucking country why is it they have them in britain they have them in switzerland they have them in germany they have them all over the fucking place what's going on with this shit also in the u.s and all over the place what's going on with this stuff and it's not only russians you also know keep in mind also the chinese and all kinds of billionaires because the british royals they like what they do is they diversify this so-called billionaires you know they make these billionaires to flash with them, you know, in Canada, Australia, whatever. Um, and they'll flash with them. So they make the news. And this is how they promote their democracy, wherever you want to say this. Uh, just partially. This is also how they enforce their democracy. You know, to me, it's important why nobody questions these issues in 2014. And we are still choking on it without even knowing where the whole direction is going to take. From Obama, literally, through Donald Trump, who did absolutely nothing in respect to Ukraine. And all the way to Joe Biden, who did something under whose jurisdiction actually war even took place. And to where it's unknown 
And towards Zelensky, the mandate was from me to be silent about Kamala Harris and so on, etc. etc. Stuff that I already talked to you about. For me, it's fascinating how they do this stuff. Why was it that it was just so uh, acceptable in 2014 that nobody, nobody questioned what the fuck goes on? Well, the thing is, they do it in a such a way that if you live, let's say, in a Britain, and you're like, you read the paper, like, you know, you, you know, or, you know, or, no, you're gonna get, or, you know, or, you know, or, you know, you're gonna send, uh, you know, uh, you know, military wherever uh, to Ukraine, you know, so give them a support and this and that. Uh, what they do is. They, the only thing they do is, man, they, eh, you know, you're going to have a, if you're in a high position, you're just going to happen that you're going to bump into somebody that is, I don't know, it depends on whatever work you do, and in that moment you're going to bump into him, is going to be Abramovich that's going to bump in him and the two are going to hug and this and that. And they're going to let you know wherever the fuck you're going to start to question these things, they're going to, they're going to point you out that at the top of the UK government, they always use issues. It's about UK, but also about Switzerland. It's going to come to the money issues. It's going to come to all kinds of fucking shit issues. Uh, that there is people that are mighty wealthy and so what they are you what they are doing the people who install them on those positions i'm not talking about the british royals here i'm talking about uh, the politics that goes to the washington dc ah white house white house white house is like uh, like let's say this is a chessboard and it's like oh okay this this is a this is a White House. White House is whatever the fuck you know. Uh, and it's pretty much what goes to the U.S. Congress. You know, it's other people that are deciding about this stuff. They make you they make you feel in such a way. Let's say that you are Ukrainian in the U.S. or in Britain or uh, you are not going to even fucking question this shit. It becomes like uh, self evident that there is nothing you can do. <laughs> well, that's the kind of attitude I just don't go along with. And it was clarified to me about number of these apparatchiks. Eh, these are actually clowns. It's up to you how you want to believe and see this as a reality. I mean, how much you are willing to, or um, you can also be compelled to accept this as a reality. Accept, right? But this is 2014. This is what went on in 2014, folks. And let us not allow this shit to repeat in 2000. And what is it now, election now? 2024, 2025. Let us not allow them to repeat this type of brainwash. Pull us into some kind of, you know, side channeling like this. No, I don't agree with it. Uh, Ukraine needs more than it's to be more done to it and I would suggest Ukrainian people to elect NATO uh, excuse me Stoltenberg and even rename the country to NATO in a in a mental sense of course you're not gonna go and do that kind of stuff but if you're if you're a little bit crazy eventually uh, it won't harm you, just so you get your stuff done. Let's say just temporary. Don't allow to be side channeled is what I'm trying to say. When they try to side channel you, side channel them in the most whatever fucking way. Even if it's primitive, whatever it is, uh, as long as it works. And what works is where you believe in yourself, you become unstoppable. You do your stuff. If you're not going to believe in yourself, nobody will believe in you. It is simple as this. Something absolutely needs to be done in respect to those bombs Putin is dumping on Ukraine. I see that there is a new type of bomb 
again in Russian arsenal that extends the distance twice the range of those gliding bombs and it's also of a greater precision it's the shit that also was involved in Ukraine uh, negotiations and so I advise Ukraine also about evolving a politic that will not stick to the scenario of negotiations between your politicians and between the your, between the Russian side. That means you're gonna have to go extra mile and you're gonna have to open this topic globally so that people can start to discuss and so you get rid of your fucking mentality from 2014 and get your fucking country back together. That's what I'm trying to say. It's gonna take more than Zelensky. It's gonna take more than Kuleba. It's going to take a whole lot of sweat, a whole lot of tears, a whole lot of pain to get through with it. And you're not going to be capable to do this stuff by yourself. And to do it, you're going to have to create a global topic about this stuff. You're going to have to pull other countries into it so that you get the type of the military support that uh, is going to avoid that bullshit about you're catching the bad news every fucking day, catching up with the bad news, you know, when you're trying to catch up with something. The Russians are fucking bombarding with the news about, you know, every time with 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 a new gimmick. You know, don't, don't give me this. Give me a fucking solution to it. We need solutions to this stuff, and the solutions simply are out of reach if you will try to make it up for the lost time and lost equipment and lost, uh, you know, whatever fucking lost. We need, Ukraine needs the support from the West, the real support from the West, the Bible support that's going to make a difference. And it starts with the NATO, it starts with your mentality. This is the way it works. Not taking shit for granted in absolutely any way. Sumi region, this is an all messed up police station all over the fucking place. Everywhere in Sumi. Nowhere more at nowhere more in Sumi throughout the Sumi region than literally at the police headquarters in Sumi. I think I was clear about it. Police directors from Sumi headquarters literally were making arrangements with border patrol with a border passing prior to arrival from the Rus R Russia. They would the limousine would come. They made all the agreements so they would just you know this is the way it went. So. Putin wanted to come out, this is a legitimate through the Sumi. 